Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And in Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 25, if you'll turn over there, Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How, the, how shall then his kingdom stand? Now, the Bible is very clear that Satan has a kingdom. We've talked about this before. We'll talk about it again some other time. But we've talked about the fact that Satan has a kingdom. And, uh, and, and Jesus is recognizing that kingdom right here. He's saying that, that he is, his kingdom wouldn't stand if he, if he fought against himself. It makes no sense. Now, another verse, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We, we, live, in, we live in a day uh, where we have rapidly appro- we're rapidly approaching a total apostasy in, in, uh, in churches today. Uh, but Disney... Uh, I believe entertainment is a main culprit of that in the God's people and in their lives. Disney, the magic kingdom or God's kingdom. You think about that, the name. Just look at the name itself, first of all. The first thing, that Disney is very deceptive. It's very deceptive. The whole company uh, has been built on deception, really. And, and under the guise of... Under the guise of entertainment or joking or laughing or something like that, Disney has been able to pull off amazing things for the devil. I mean, just absolutely amazing things. Uh, You say, oh, I don't believe so. No, you really should think about it because I don't know anybody else that unless they made a cartoon or made anything could ever have pulled off the amount of witchcraft that is pulled off with Disney under the guise of entertainment. And under the guise of like animals or something else, they were able to put it in cartoon form and able literally to pull off witchcraft and to put it in everybody's home. There isn't anybody here that would probably say that they've never had a Disney movie in their home, right? I mean, I mean, most of us have had those cartoons or something like that. We, we've had those in our houses. Uh, so we've watched them. I've watched hundreds of them uh, in, in my life. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, but it's amazing. But the Bible says, but no marvel. That Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The devil is not, Satan was not going to come to Eve in the garden and say openly, hey, we should rebel against God. Well, that's not the way he works. He's very subtle. The Bible says that. It says he's, that word subtle means sly in design, artful, cunning, insinuating. That's the way he works. He's very crafty and seductive and so is Disney in all that they do. You say, how could Bambi be bad, or how could any of the other little kid stories be bad? Well, by a cunning, a cunning way and a, that they devise fables and stories and mix in the gods, the false gods, into their perverted, and they pervert many of those stories by the way they do it. Um, consider first the name, the Magic Kingdom. Now, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Should any, does any Christian have any business supporting Disney when the first thing that they tell you is that the Disney kingdom, they say the magic kingdom? Now I want you to think about that. Magic is anti-God. God does not use magic. God never did use magic or illusions or anything else. He never used it. But you think about it. Is magic evil? Amen. Is it evil? Do you believe there's a good magic and a bad magic? No, but Disney Disney tried to teach you that. Actually, Disney did teach you that that there was a good magic and a bad magic. That was the, that was that was one of the messages that Disney taught you. One of the lessons that Disney taught you. How many Christians would be pleased to tell people that they practice magic or sorcery? Not one of us would ever admit that to anybody. But consider one of the oldest Disney films, Fantasia. Mickey is wearing a sorcerer's hat and casting a spell. The whole movie is about him casting spells and causing inanimate objects to have life and to dance around and to do things. 
all by the power of magic. Just, just think about that. Is it, do we actually believe that that is pleasing to the Lord? I don't believe so. The whole movie is about being a wizard's apprentice. Magic is wickedness in the sight of God's eyes. Should you and I be entertained with something that is clearly in a violation of God's word? God was very clear, suffer not a witch to live. His law was very clear that witchcraft, sorceries, all those things would be put down and it would land you in the lake of fire. Should you and I, should you and I be entertained with something that is clearly in violation to God? Should we please ourselves? Should we have pleasure off of something that God hates? Think about that. I mean, God even forbid to have a grove or an idol to be set up next to a temple, but you and I are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and we allow those things in our midst, or we have allowed those. Look at some of the other themes that did the Disney themes of magic. I want to. I, I, I want to. I want you to know that this is not just one thing. Hundreds. Of, I can't even. I could couldn't possibly cover all of them. But 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the most popular ones tonight because I want you to think about something. I want you to think that the message in general of Disney is that of the Magic Kingdom. It's that of magic. And I ask you, the Magic Kingdom or God's Kingdom? Which one do you want to be caught in? The Magic Kingdom or in God's Kingdom? Let's look at the first one. Let's look at Aladdin. Aladdin is one of those movies where a gin is in a bottle and grants wishes. He comes out, he grants wishes. Well, do you know what a gin is? Genies are special, or jinns are special creatures mentioned in the Quran and in Islamic mythology who inhabit an unseen world in dimensions beyond the visible universe or humans. Together, the jinn, humans, and angels make up the three sapient creatures in God. The Quran mentions that the jinn are made up of smokeless and scorching fire, but also physical in nature, being able to interact physically with people and objects, and likewise to be acted upon. Like human beings, the jinns can also be good, evil, or naturally neutrally benevolent, and hence have free will like humans. And unlike angels, the jinns are mentioned frequently in the Quran. The whole movie is about a genie that grants wishes. It has demonic powers. Now, jinns, the, 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 the real name of a jinn is a demon. That's, a, that's a, the name in antiquity is a devil. It's a demon. So, now, so basically, this spirit being that can, that can shape shift and change is coming out of a, is coming out of a bottle or, and, and he is granting wishes. Think about it. Do you understand that millions of people and many, and many of them Christians have entertained themselves with devils? All that is is a devil. You ask any Muslim what a jinn is, they'll tell you it's a devil. They, they, that's, their, that's their term for a devil, a demon, a spirit, a foul spirit. They, they understand that quite well. The whole movie is about that, though. Do you, consider the older movie, older movies than that, The Sword and the Stone. That was a classic. Ever, I mean, if you ever watch that, I don't know if you, you know, he, he comes up and he's king, you know, he, they're looking for the next king and he takes his hand, and he grabs that, and if he's the king, then this, all this light comes out and this shine and he pulls that sword from the stone and, and he's the king and there's Merlin the wizard that is there. How about that? A wizard. What does the Bible says, say about sorcerers and wizards? See, but that's just fake. Not to your neurons in your mind, it isn't. It's real. And it's not fake because you're watching it. And you and I are entertaining ourselves. So if it was real and it manifested itself as real in your life, you talk to some people who've done a lot of drugs and, and been around a lot of bad stuff, and they will tell you some of the stuff that you see in movies ain't that far-fetched. Not at all. Not at all that far-fetched. That whole story, though, about the sword of the sword is about a young boy who will be king and a wizard who, who works special and magic and he, and he and spells and he shapeshifts. He changes things and he turns things. Into, but they do it in a laughing way to make you laugh. So what are you and I doing? It, when we're watching that, we are laughing at witchcraft. We're laughing at people that conjure up spells. We're laughing at that. That's, 
What is that? It's wickedness. It's something that God hates and we're laughing at it. How about, how about uh, Beauty and the Beast? That's an easy one we've talked about. I'll not belabor that one too long. But the beast eventually turns all things into perfection and everything is changed. You ever notice at the end of that where, where, where everything is made new by the beast? The beast fixes everything. Now turn to Revelation chapter 13 and all the world wondered after the beast. And he can make things good. He'll make things perfect. You say, oh, you're far stretching. No, I'm not far stretching anything, folks. You've been hypnotized to believe a lot. And so have I been hypnotized. Like, oh, that's just, that's just, now since I got saved, I don't watch a lot of magic stuff anyway. I, I kind of, that one was a no-brainer for me right away. It's like, um, I don't think God likes that stuff. I don't think magic is something God really, really likes. I mean, I pretty much picked up on that one pretty quick after I got saved that that wasn't something that God wanted me to watch. But it's the beast that does it. How about the cartoon Pocahontas? That one takes the cake right there if you think about it. A woman that was converted to Christianity in real life. She was, she was converted to Christianity. And Disney turns her into a woman who consults trees and familiar spirits to get the answers to her problems. Disney turns her into an absolute spiritist and pagan that's talking to a tree. That a spirit comes out of the tree and tells her what she needs to do. Says, oh, I talked to your mother before and taught her what to do. Now I'll teach you what to do. What is that? Well, it's pantheism. They make magic look grand and that it cannot be evil because magic is used to defeat evil. So that's what they do. They, they, they have one good magic and one black magic. And Disney takes that and Disney shows you that, hey, there's, some, there's an evil wizard, but there's a good wizard too. So what did that set up in your mind? That there's an evil wizard and there's a good wizard? Well, let me ask you a question. The magic kingdom or God's kingdom? In the magic kingdom, there are no absolutes. No absolutes in the magic kingdom. But in God's kingdom, there are absolutes. Consider other movies like, like Escape to Witch Mountain and other movies like that, full of evil and witchcraft and magic power. Snow White, full of magic, and the young maiden is tempted by, by the witch to eat the apple. Now, do you think they used that apple by accident? I mean, honestly, do you think that that was used by accident? Do you think that bright red apple that they're showing was an accident? Or do you think it's, it's a clear mocking of the Genesis story? I mean, I mean, we know that, right? We know that they're doing that in that movie. That's what that's about. I mean, it's a, it's a witch that comes along, and, and that's exactly what she, she tries to trick him into doing. I want I want you to think back. Uh, I, I mentioned something to you about Aladdin. I want you to think back on that Aladdin. There's a song that's played in there, and I want to show you how closely those two are attached to witchcraft and what's being taught to you. Uh, everybody's heard this song before. If you've ever watched that movie, A Whole New World, you've heard that song, right? You, you, you've probably heard it. Well, listen to the words. I can show you the world, shining, shimmering, splendid. Tell me, princess, now when did you last let your heart decide? Okay, so stop right there. What is, what, what is it? What is he say? What is he saying when he's singing that song? He's telling her to decide, let her heart decide what she should do. Now, what does the Bible say about your heart? It says it is desperately wicked. Who could know it? You're to follow and obey God's book, not your heart, because your heart is desperately wicked. And you're to follow. But what's this message? This message is saying, oh, come on. A guy comes in. He's a thief, right? Aladdin is a thief. He comes in and he flies on a magic carpet and he comes in and he's telling her not to get married the way she was supposed to, but to listen to him and to leave and to go with him and follow her heart. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you want a guy to come into your daughter when she's 18 years old and to start to strike up a relationship with your daughter and tell, tell, tell her that she should follow her heart and leave and come with him? Would you, would you, would you want, would you want that to happen? No. Well then why would you and I watch a movie where that would, that, that teaches that very lesson? And then wonder why the children grow up and they do just that. Think about it. Listen to this. This is satanic. I want you to understand the magic and the Satanism that is mixed with this. 
That's it's it's the listen. I can open your eyes, take you wonder by wonder over sideways and under on a magic carpet ride, a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. Do you see what he's saying there? I can I can open your eyes. Have you heard that before? That's right. What did Satan say to Eve in the Garden of Eden? Oh, God does surely know that the day ye eat thereof, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be as gods. Hmm. Take you wonder by wonder, a whole new world, a new fantastic point of view. Listen, listen to this now. No one to tell us no or where to go. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. It's Satanism. It's teaching Satanism. And if you don't think as Walt Disney's burning in hell right now that he didn't know that, now he wasn't around for this, but everything else that led up to it he was. I mean, he, he, there's worse than that even back farther if you, if you study it. But anyway, a new fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no or where to go or say we're only dreaming. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. Do you not get it? Do you see? Do you see what you've got? A man that's coming in that's trying to get a girl away from away from the structure of her home, take her away, and to teach her all these things. And he's going to show her a whole new world, just like Satan said that your eyes will be open. I mean, it'll be life will be different for you. You'll be like a god. But when I'm way up here, it's crystal clear that now I'm in a whole new world with you. Now I'm in a whole new world with you. Unbelievable sights, indescribable feeling. Soaring, tumbling, freewheeling through an endless diamond sky, a whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. A hundred thousand things to see. Hold your breath. It's getting better. Do you see how this is satanic? Do you understand what, what's the message that's being taught here? And, and he says this, I'm like a shooting star. I've come so far, I can't go back to where I used to be. What's Satan? Hmm? Yeah. He's that star that can't go back to where he used to be. So he has to go to a whole new world. He has to teach a whole new world and everything else. What's the goal? A new world order. A new world order. A new world order. You say, I, I can't make the connection like that. Really? You can't see magic and witchcraft and a song mixed in? By the way, you need to, you need to learn what rock and roll, that, how, how devil possessed rock and roll people are if you don't understand that because they are very much devil possessed. Very much. And they admit it that they get all their inspiration from the devil. And if you talk to some people that went to rock concerts and hung out to some of them, they'll tell you, you can feel the spirit of wickedness there in that place. You don't even, you can just feel it. You just walk in the presence of it and you can feel it right away. Every turn a surprise with new horizons to pursue. Every moment, red letter, I'll chase them anywhere. There's time to spare. Let me share this whole new world with you. A whole new world, that's where we'll be. A thrilling chase, a wondrous place for you and me. What is that teaching? I mean, the song is, have you ever noticed, all these movies teach rebellion to order. Right, they all teach, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. They all teach that. All those movies are about somebody that's structured in an order, and they've got to break free from that order. What is that? Out of chaos comes order. It's the same satanic message that's in music, and that's in movies, and that's in the magic kingdom. In the movie Milan 2, a girl is guarded by a red dragon that is watching out for her. He's her guardian. He protects her. Anybody know what a red dragon is? You know who the dragon is? I have to tell you, the, the old dragon, the old wicked serpent, Satan. I mean, you understand that, don't you? So what is the message that's being taught there? Oh, Satan will protect you. So, oh, no, they didn't say Satan. They said the dragon. <laughs> they know exactly what they're saying. Exactly what they're doing. And it's working. It's worked wonders. When this dragon goes into a temple, he calls the spirits out to help him prepare for this girl's wedding. So he walks into a, 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 a Chinese temple and spirits start coming out. He starts conjuring them up to do something for him. So you see the devils or the demons help you. 
You see, now we've said that calling spirits forth will help you. There's nothing wrong with that. See, it's okay. Do you understand that? See, you say it's just a cartoon. No, they're showing you that if you do this, if you do this, that they'll help you. No, the devil won't help you. The devil will destroy you. But that's the message that is given. That's the message that is given. I don't even have to get into a subliminal message tonight, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk about any images. I'm not going to talk about anything subliminal. I'm going to take exact content, and I want to ask you, the magic kingdom or the kingdom of God? I don't need to go into any of that stuff. I don't need to go into any of it. I can prove all this stuff is from the pit of hell just by the content that's in it. I don't have to go into anything else. See, why is this important? For when your family, when they walk up to you and they ask and they look at you, they say, well, how come they can't have this movie? But you actually can give them an answer. And you can tell them why. Look at them and say, the magic kingdom or God's kingdom or the kingdom of God? Which one? Which one? Okay. And you say, well, come on now, you're being too hard. That's all modern stuff. Good old Walt, he couldn't have known about any of that stuff. Good old Walt couldn't have been around for any of that. Okay, well, let's go back into Walt today. Let's take a movie called Mary Poppins. Okay? Hope you don't have a spoonful of sugar. Because you're going to need it to help this medicine go down after I give this to you. I promise you. You're going you're gonna to need a few spoonfuls of sugar to help this medicine go down, I'm sure. But listen, consider this. Now, by the way, I, I want to preface this before I say this. That this information didn't come from an independent Baptist. This comes from a Wicca website. You know what Wicca is, right? It's a Satanist. A Wiccan. A wizard. A warlock. So they, they don't like Baptists. And I guarantee you they don't like me. And I guarantee you they don't stand for what we do. But they're just going to tell the truth about what they see. Listen to this. When she first, when Mary Poppins, when she first arrived at the bank's household, she was delicately floating down from the clouds, the heavens, with an umbrella as her flying tool. This occurred after an extremely strong wind had swept away all the other potential nannies for Jane and Michael. Well, now listen to this. Listen to how he slipped this in here. Brother Andrew's got the umbrella. Listen, listen to how they, they uh, slip this in here. While looking out the window at the storm, the children noticed Mary Poppins floating their way. Michael said, perhaps it's a witch. To which Jane responded, of course not. Witches have brooms. Why, why did they do that? Because they're mocking you. They're telling you that I got you to watch witchcraft. And you're too stupid to figure it out. And you're right, because we were. And we watched it and thought, oh, that's nothing. That's just some flying lady around with an umbrella. That happens every day. Go outside, look up there. Lady flying around with an umbrella. Now, some people debate, debate whether Mary Poppins deserves to be the, give the title of a witch. But if you look at it, she, she, she exhibits many characteristics of a, of a practitioner of the craft, they call it. She has strong connections with nature, practices a form of magic, has a positive aura which affects everyone around her, and has a knowledge of medicine as a healer, a teacher, a giver, and a protector. Of course, this is from a, a Wiccan's perspective. Do, do you see? That's Mary Poppins. And you're probably running around the house singing that song. Well, maybe not. I hope many of you guys were <laughs> singing that song, but... but uh, Okay, consider another movie. Have you ever heard, at the same time that Disney was out, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks? Have you ever heard of that one? You've heard of that one before? Well, unlike Mary Poppins, this lady, Eglantine, actually gives herself the title of a witch and an apprentice witch at that. She is secretly enrolled in Emulus Brown's Correspondence College of Witchcraft. Doesn't that make you want to give Mickey a big hug? You think about that. Don't that don't that make you feel all warm? Don't you want to sing that It's a Small World After All song? Right in front of the open, no no questions asked, no no, no hide it. Yeah, but I come from the witch's school. I'm, just, I'm here. 
When she is forced due to the war to take in three stranded children, her magical practices are forced out in the open. She is perhaps the Disney's characters most suited to the title of which she is Disney's best representation of a modern practitioner of witchcraft. This is from a Wiccan. If the adventure to the island of Nabombo is, is disregarded, many of her practices do involve magical spells, which is something that is practiced in witchcraft. However, the film is no, in no way an accurate portrayal of the Wiccan religion or witchcraft. It's Disney's attempt at portraying a fantasy world for children while encompassing elements of a practical religious practice. See, that's a, do, you, do you want your children having that practical religious practice of, of witchcraft? Of course not. What did he do? Well, he, Walt Disney just went into imagination zone and he took you into there and he added witchcraft with fantasy, wrapped it up in a nice old lady so you wouldn't think anything of it. So, because who's going to get mad at Mary Poppins or Anglantine, whatever her name is? I'm not old enough to remember that one. But I remember seeing it on TV once. I mean, I remember it coming on, but I don't, I don't really remember it or anything that much. But you think about that. They made you like that old lady. They made that old witch, who's a witch. You understand that, right? Can, can I say that enough to you? She was a witch. Practicing spells and magic, she was a witch. And Walt Disney got you to like her. And you thought, well, she's a pretty nice lady. That witch. Oh, we'll skip forward a little bit to the little mermaid. Besides the way she's dressed. Like what we would call a... That's right, son. She's not dressed. That's right. Shh. Thanks, son. We'll keep the preaching up here, okay? But he is right. She is a hybrid. Uh, er, I think he's listened to a few sermons. Ursula is probably the only element in The Little Mermaid that relates particularly to witchcraft and the occult. This is a Wiccan guy admitting to you that he's saying, hey, listen, that movie right there, that's got some good occult stuff in it. That's got some great Wiccan stuff in it. You know what the Bible says? That the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Wiser than the children of light. You are the children of light as a saved. We are the children of light as a saved. But the children of this world are wiser do you know do you know that Madonna will not let her children watch television? Will not let her children watch television or look at magazines. Cindy Crawford won't either. She won't let her children watch television. She says, oh no way, I'm not letting them. she wouldn't let her children watch Hannah Montana. You know why? She said, Because that girl acts too sassy and I don't want my daughter to learn that. Not to mention she dresses like a whore but and dances around like one. Amen. It's the truth. Girl's naked. She's running around half naked. Now she is fully naked out there, unfortunately. She wouldn't let her children watch that. The head of the, the uh, high priest of the Satanist church, I can't think of his name now, Anton LaVey. Anton LaVey said, I don't let my children watch television. That's the church of Satan. He says, I don't let my children watch television. Are you nuts? Why? Because he knew what kind of power it wields over them. Anyway, so Ursula in this Little Mermaid, we find out early in the film through the characters' conversations, was banished from the kingdom in the underwater city of Atlantica by King Triton, Ariel's father. Okay, wow. Let's stop right there and we'll tackle that one a little bit here. Do you know who King Triton is? And you know you, you know what you know what Atlantis is, right? You understand what Atlantis is? You know the mythical New Age Atlantis, where some people and they're they're I, I happen to personally believe that Atlantis is probably was is probably a real place. Um, I think it was. I think it was I think it was advanced technology and advanced culture. I, I think it could have something to do with the giants, it could have something to do with with, with some of those things that, that went on. So I I, I, I I believe it. I, I believe there's something there to that. I just don't know exactly what. But the point is, is that King Triton, he is none other than the god Poseidon. You know who Poseidon is, right? He's the god of water. Okay. Poseidon is the god of the water in Greek mythology. Okay. The god of the heavens is Zeus in Greek mythology. 
right? And the god of the underworld is Hades in Greek mythology. Okay? So you have three, you have three of those gods that rule just about everything. Okay? What this story is telling you is about the god Poseidon. It's teaching you about that god Poseidon. Anyway, so he says that Ursula, we find out early in the film through the character uh, that Ariel's father, after she eagerly awaited her chance to have revenge on King Triton, Ursula is the stereotypical image of an ugly, evil witch. She is a large sea witch with, with white hair, evil eyes, and most importantly, tentacles from the waist down. She lives at the bottom of the sea where she tends her garden of lost souls. And the sea gave up their dead. Remember that? Hmm. Oh, by the way, do you do remember that there that there there are angels bound in the great river Euphrates. There are angels that are bound in the seas as well. They're there. Ursula tricks Ariel into giving her her voice in exchange for human legs. Ariel wants to be a human in order to meet Prince Eric and have him fall in love with her. What kind of message you want your daughter to have? Trade in whatever they can just to meet a man. Making him think that she was, uh, Ursula uses Ariel's voice along with a new form to make Eric fall for her, making him think that she was the one who rescued him. Ursula again uses shape shifting to transform into a beautiful young woman and calls herself Vanessa. Ursula is again the symbol of evil in the Disney film and is championed by the force of good Ariel and her friends. Ursula transforms again at the end, making herself tremendously big in order to terrify Ariel and the others. The transformation ends up working against her when Eric uses a large wooden shaft from the ship to harpoon Ursula's heart and to kill her. What are we saying here? What are we, what are we, what are we showing here? Basically what you're, you're seeing is witchcraft in action. You're seeing it right in front of you. You're seeing false gods being taught and you're seeing it from a young age. Those children watch those things. I mean, those, these, you have to, these aren't marketed to adults. These are marketed to children. Now it affects you and I the same. Right. And then they watch them over and over. And over again, they sit in front of them and they just continue to absorb all those things. So you don't think all that magic is not going to have an impact on them? It's not going to have some kind of an impact on children when they see those things over and over again? Of course it's going to have an impact on them. It has to. You say, prove it. Okay, well, if you bring your children to church and I preach the Bible to them every week, does it have an impact on them? Does it? Does it influence them and have an impact on them? Of course it does. Does preaching influence and impact you? Well, exposure to satanic principles and enlightened principles and magic and false gods and everything else, won't that have an impact on you too? Right. So you see, they know it. And it works. The plot of the film involves an old... How about another one? Let's let's go way back into the Disney days, and, and to Walt's days again, and, and let's go back. Let's see if... It, you're seeing a pattern here, right? I mean, I, I, I looked online, and there was a list of 100 movies or more. I mean, no, there was, there was hundreds of them. And I, could not, I couldn't possibly read you all the titles of movies with magic and witchcraft. And that's not even talking about any lewdness or wickedness or anything, or pop culture or anything else. Again, I ask you, the magic kingdom or the kingdom of God? Which one? In Pinocchio, the plot of the film involves a, an old wood carver named Jepito who ca- carves a wooden puppet named Pinocchio who is brought to life by a blue fairy. Right? Who tells him he can become a real boy if he proves himself brave, truthful, and unselfish. Thus begins the puppet's adventure to become a real boy which involves many encounters with a host of unsavory characters. The magic gives life unto the wooden boy. wonder what that teaches. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that, that the image, that, that the beast will give life unto the image. There will be an image reared up of a beast, and it will be sitting there, and, and, and the beast will give life unto the image. He'll make it come alive. If you don't think Disney and those men knew that, they, they, they know it. They know it all too well. Time does not permit me to go into too many more of these, but, but Sorcerer's Apprentices... Um, there, there's, there's a movie called uh, Twitches. There were two young witches named Carmen and Alex carefully mastered the skill of balancing a normal life with the potential upset that comes from having mystical, magical powers. 
When the evil forces of darkness come back to upset the Coventry, the sister witches sacrifice their harmony to make things right. That, that's, a, that's one from a few years back, maybe about maybe six, seven, eight years ago or something like that. Do you understand that this is the constant? If, you, if, you, if your children watch the Disney Channel, or they, they are constantly being bombarded with these things over and over again. This magic and these spells. What is this doing? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, what it's exactly doing. There was another movie back in Walt Disney's day called The Shaggy Dog. Everybody laughed at that movie, right? The Shaggy Dog. What do you have? He had a magic ring that was a relic that once he put that magic ring on, he turned into a dog. And if he took it off, he, he wasn't a dog anymore. Wasn't well, that wonderful? That's shape-shifting. Isn't that great? And a magic relic, a talisman that he had. And guess what? We watched it and said, oh, that's pretty funny. That's great. Isn't that funny? Isn't that great entertainment? Well, it's devilish. It's witchcraft. That's exactly what it is. But what did we do? We just entertained ourselves with it. Oh, it's only entertainment. How about the movie series Pirates of the Caribbean? That's wicked. I mean, just plain, just, just, just plain, just plain wicked. Johnny Depp, one of the, the main actor, he admits he he's possessed by devils. He admits it. He doesn't. He doesn't even deny it. He's possessed by devils. But the content of that show, Pirates of the Caribbean, is wicked. I mean, honestly. But if you, if you look at the the what's involved with with uh, with with that movie, it's all about running around stealing and demons and stealing treasure and everything. That's what the whole thing's about. The whole movie's about that witchcraft and women and everything else. It's, it's, that's what the whole thing's about. The whole thing, and it's sold to children. Well, you want to grow up and be a crook like that too, don't you? You look at that, don't you? Don't you want to grow up to be a crook like that and grow up and steal like that and grow up and do that? Oh, no, we teach our children against that. Yeah, but when you place that in front of them and you show them the magic over and over and over again, what does that do to them? What does that do to your head? What does that make you think? Are there any more absolutes? Well, if a bad guy that's a murdering pirate can actually be a good guy, well, then I could be a little bad and still be a good guy. Couldn't I? So it doesn't work that way. Oh, yes, it does work that way. Those kids, I remember when I was a kid, I could, I could take you, I could take you to five movies right now that I could just about memorize. I could watch that movie with you and sit there and watch it and I could tell you everything they're going to say before they say it. Sad, isn't it? Let's consider another one back in Disney's, Walt Disney's time, Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Oh, that's got to be harmless, right? Well, let's think about that one for a minute. Where does his name come from, and why does he look like he does, and why does he... Well, Peter Pan is, is from the god called Pan. Pan was a god, and he played... He was a very perverted god, so he was into fornication and other things like that. And he had the pointed ears like that, and he, he kind of mimic, he kind of resembles the satire a little bit, um, or the satire a little bit. Um, but... Um, he he had the pointed ears, and he has. And if you watch the movie Peter Pan, what you see is you you see a pan flute. Have you ever seen that? You'll see him playing that pan flute. Well, that is a, that is a signal to you to understand that who he really is. He is Pan. He is the god Pan. That's who he is. Now, this false god Peter looked like a demon. By the way, Peter Pan looks like a devil. If you notice his pointed ears and his outfit, um, only a devil would come through a girl's window at night. I just want to remind you of something. Uh, only a devil would come through a girl's bedroom window at night and say, "Hey, come on, let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's go off to Never Never ne- Neverland. Let's go. Come on, let's go." I'm just curious. Would you want your daughter to let a guy up through her window and talk to her about taking off in the middle of the night with her? Do you think it might influence them a little bit when you add a little bit of magic? And oh, by the way, and then there's a fairy there that's dressed. Like, like a whore. I mean, she's, she's got, by the way, I'm not using that word loosely. I'm using that very biblically. I mean, if, if you wear, if you wear a skirt that goes all the way up to your thighs, 
and and a string number like that down there, that that would be considered dressing like a whore. I just I maybe you don't know that, but but now you do. Okay, when you uncover the thigh like that and you show your body off and you, I mean, you don't leave any any anything to to, to the imagination. You think about that. That's exactly what it was. That's it. You have a fairy running around, and, and that fairy has this pixie dust. And believe me, that is all satanic. All of that is demonic. And I challenge you to prove that it isn't. I challenge you to prove that it isn't. And you won't be able to because all you have to do is open up a dictionary and they'll tell you what that fairy, what a fairy is, where it comes from, the, the, the power that it comes with, and everything else. It's all right there. You just open up a dictionary and see it. Now, Peter Pan, in other words, Peter Pan came in and you ever seen, if you, if you watch it, he is, he is wrestling with his shadow. He's wrestling and he's, he's fighting with his shadow. Right. He's demonic. He has power. He takes, he says, I want to take you away from all of this. He says, or where we'll never have any parents tell us what to do again. And we'll never have to grow up and we can live any old way we want to. We can do whatever we want to do. What is he teaching her? Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. There is no laws in Never Never Land. You can do whatever you want. I, I wonder if we have ever thought farther than the end of our nose concerning the content that children see. Or that, our, that, that we put in front of our eyes. Because you and I would never condone a young man knocking on your daughter's window, would you? I mean, I, I'm just curious, Dad, what would you do if you caught, in the middle of the night, you went up there and there was a guy that flew into your, your daughter's window? What, what would you, what, I, I'm just curious what you would do if he flew into your daughter's window and, and, uh, right, you, you'd take out the turkey load, right? The buck shot, something's coming out, and he's going out the other way. He's probably going to go out that window, and he may not get up after that, right? Well, then why would you set that in front of their face as a temptation to see that? Peter Pan is something to help you escape from reality where you never grow up. And the only adult that's ever around is a dirty captain that's a pirate. And he's the, Captain Hook, he's the only one that's ever around. That's the only adult that's ever around, and he's, he's an evil man. So it's right to run around and do what they're doing, and it's more evil to be an evil adult. Do you see? Do you see the message? There's so many other hidden things in Peter Pan that, that, are, that are provable as to what it really is. And, and, and uh, you know, the, the demonic influence. In, in fact, if you just study the God Pan, and you'll figure it out. That's where the, that's where the modern idea of horns coming out of, of the head of Satan, that, that comes from the god Pan. Well, if you notice Peter Pan's pointed ears, you'll see exactly what the, that, that was what it mimicked. That's Peter Pan, among other things that I won't go into, but it's pretty obvious it should be anyway. Exodus chapter 22 and verse number 18, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Revelation 9.21, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Even him, now listen, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power. Now we're going to talk about superheroes. Not today, but we're going to talk about superheroes to finish this series out. But listen, li listen to this. Who coming, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power. What is the biggest deal today to show in movies? I mean, Marvel comic movies, that you got Iron Man, you got Thor, you got, I'm gonna cover that on Sunday, some of those things. You got all these things, right? They are the biggest pictures, right? Why? Because they have powers, powers, powers. What is the Antichrist gonna have? Power, power, Power. What are they gearing you up for and conditioning for? Oh, that's power. Yeah, that's power. Right. 
That's no big, that's just powers. Yeah, we know what those are. With all power and signs and lying wonders. What, 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 is, what does the magic kingdom teach you? Teaches you about powers. Teaches you, teaches you about signs. Teaches you about lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let me ask you, the magic kingdom or the kingdom of God? Really is pretty easy, isn't it? Isn't it really pretty easy? Oh, I don't know what somebody will think. I'm more concerned at what God thinks about me enjoying the magic kingdom and not His kingdom. Why do I want to live in the magic kingdom and not in the kingdom of God? Why do I want to be taken up? The magic kingdom is Satan's kingdom. Do you understand that? That is Satan's kingdom. Disney has taught satanic principles throughout all of their movies. They have taught witchcraft. They have packaged it up in little old ladies that come in flying on umbrellas singing nice little songs to you they have they they have taught they have taught witchcraft through flying magic carpets through jinns or devils that come and teach you magic and teach you that uh the right way to do things and answer your every wish i'll give you what you want they've taught it to you in a song a whole new world oh just follow me follow the devil satanic principles it's a whole new world when you do You'll have a whole new point of view. How about this point of view? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, what I marvel at, and I shouldn't because the Bible says I really shouldn't, but what surprises me the most is there'll be actually Christians that will try to defend this. They will try to find a way to defend all of those cartoons and all that, the, all that magic and all that witchcraft. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. The magic kingdom or the kingdom of God? You know, you can't flirt around with both. You've got to decide. You and I have to decide that we're going to follow God. And the magic kingdom is not following God. If you go to, if you go to Disney World and you see all those things, it's all about magic. Everything there is about the magic. The magic. The magic kingdom. I mean, I, I, again, I'm not going to get into subliminal messages. We're almost done, actually, right now. But uh, I'm not going to get into subliminal messages. I'm not going to get into any of those things. I'm not even going to get into the fact that, that there's, there's pretty solid proof that he was a 33rd degree Mason, uh, that, uh, that the way he built things and the number system that he used in, 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 uh, in the Magic Kingdom was not by accident. It was on purpose. But whether Walt Disney was just a tool of Satan and had no idea that he was spreading satanic principles, does it really matter? Does it really matter if he knew it or not? It doesn't. Why? Because in the magic kingdom, there are no absolutes. But in the kingdom of God, there are absolutes. Look through it. Look through the magic kingdom as we went through them. We've talked about all these things. What is there? No absolutes. Oh, there are no rules. You've got to break out of the rules. Aladdin was a thief and had to break out of the rules. He just had to steal. He was a nice guy. He was a nice kid and he had to steal. He just had to steal and be a thief to make it. And he had to hang out with devils in order to help him. He had to hang out with a genie that was a devil in order to make his life better. He had to do that. Right. It started out in a simple cartoon. Just a, just a simple cartoon of animation of magic, a little bit of magic. And now you've got things morphing on screen. You've got Twilight. You've got all of those things that it's legends. It all started out so little and so small. But it was 
it was it was uh, flooded with witchcraft from the beginning even. But it was sold and packaged in a way that would not be offensive to Christians. And that's exactly how they got away with it. They packaged it to people that were not paying attention. I mean, how many things did we, did we have in our house where we looked in the back of a movie and it would say Magic Kingdom? And that didn't appall us. But then we go to the pages of Scripture and then we see where God's put down the sorcerers, the wizards, the witches. He killed Saul because Saul consulted a familiar spirit. So God killed him for it. But we're not as bad as Saul. We just let familiar spirits entertain us. Amen. So we can't possibly be as bad as that. But you've got to ask yourself, magic kingdom or kingdom of God? Now, a lot of this stuff we've never even paid attention to because we never, we never paid attention to it long enough to really analyze it. But what have I done here? All I've done is taken the Word of God and I've, taken, I, I've examined the magic kingdom with the kingdom of God found in the Word of God. That's all I've done. I've just compared the two. I've put them side by side and I say, well, here's what's in the magic kingdom. Now, does, doesn't the magic kingdom sound a lot like the God of this world who has blinded their minds that they should all, that they should believe a lie? Doesn't the magic kingdom sound a lot like the devil's kingdom? Well, what did the devil want to do? Break out of the rules? Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law? He, wa- he didn't want any structure, didn't want the order. You'll be as gods. What does he want? To be God. That's what the Magic Kingdom has taught. That's just the name, folks. That's just one aspect of Disney. That's not all of it. That's just one aspect of it. The magic side of it. The witchcraft side of it. Now, ask yourself, can I condone the Magic Kingdom? Can I condone it? As a born-again Christian, those that will listen to this sermon when they go online, let me ask you a question. Will your conscience before the Holy Ghost allow you to condone the magic kingdom versus the kingdom of God? Because there's a lot of people that listen to these, and sometimes they, they don't like what they hear. Sometimes you don't like what you hear. But listen, he said that really fast. Right. It's true. I don't like saying it sometimes. But a lot of people listen to this. And they'll say, they'll be, they, now it's decision time. Not because of me, because I'll never meet you probably or ever see you. But the one thing that you, that you have to ask yourself is this. Is God pleased with the magic kingdom? Would Jesus Christ sit down and watch Peter Pan with you? Would he sit down and watch the sword and the stone with you? Would he sit down and watch the sorcerers with you? Would he sit down and watch bed knobs and broomsticks with you? Would he watch Mary Poppins have a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down? Would he watch those things? Would Jesus Christ sit with you and watch Aladdin while he gives satanic and lightning principles to to a girl that he seduces away? With a devil? No, you see, he tried that with Jesus. Don't you remember? Remember, Satan offered him the kingdom. Don't you remember in Matthew chapter 4? I told, uh, we talked about on Sunday that he offered him the kingdom. What did he say to him? He said, he took him up into heaven and in a moment of time he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and he said, All this will I give you if you bow down and worship me. And what did he say? It is written. You're going to decide to live your life by it is written? Or are you going to live your life by it might offend somebody? It might make somebody upset with me. I like this. I like this. Oh, so that justifies it. I know a lot of guys that like pornography and fornication. Are they justified by liking it? Amen? No. doesn't matter if you and I like it. It matters if it is written. 
It matters if it pleases the Lord. So ask yourself, the magic kingdom or the kingdom of God? Pretty easy when you compare the two, isn't it? Should be.